Hi, everyone. I'm Himanshu Kumar. I'm an assistant professor of economics at Ashoka University. I'm here to welcome you to Ashoka University and also introduce you to the Committee Against Disciplinary Infractions, or as everyone here on campus calls it, the CADI. I currently serve as the chair of this committee. So broadly speaking, we can think of four broad types of uh, student offenses. And there's a university level committee to deal with each one of these. First, we may have academic dishonesty of various sorts, cheating on exams, plagiarism, that sort of thing. All of those fall under the ambit of the academic integrity committee. Second, we have ragging. Now the University Grants Commission or the UGC has a very broad definition of ragging that includes most forms of harassment inflicted by students on other students, not just seniors against juniors, but even peers in the same batch, or indeed juniors harassing seniors. All of those offenses, and so most forms of student versus student harassment, come under the ambit of the anti-ragging committee. Cases involving sexual harassment are adjudicated by another UGC mandated committee, and this is normally abbreviated as the CASH. Finally, we have disciplinary infractions, and those fall under the ambit of the CADI. So the CADI does not deal with academic dishonesty or ragging or sexual harassment. It deals with other disciplinary infractions. The CADI is a committee that comprises of a total of 13 members. Uh, of these nine members are drawn from the faculty and senior staff of the university. This includes both the chair and the secretary. Uh, in addition, we have four student members uh, two of which are from the incoming third year undergraduate batch. One is from the Ashoka Scholars Program or the Master's Programs. And one student is a Young India Fellow. So that's the composition of the committee. These are the key documents that are relevant to the CADI. The structure that defines the functioning of the committee is outlined in the Ashoka University Guidelines and Regulations on Disciplinary Proceedings 2017. That document is available on the my.ashoka portal that each one of you has access to. Uh, the university maintains a confidential central record of serious infractions committed by students. Committing such infractions can curtail some of the opportunities you have at the university for which you require a no objection certificate from the university's registrar. All of this is discussed in the Ashoka University policy on disciplinary records for purposes of NOC. NOC being no objection certificate. In addition to these two documents, you should also have a look at the code of conduct section of the student handbook and the residence life policies to see what we expect of you. But essentially what we expect of you are really very high standards of personal conduct at Ashoka. In particular, we really need your help in keeping Ashoka smoke-free, alcohol-free and drug-free. I should let you know that the university is very serious about substance abuse and any infractions lead, uh, which are related to alcohol and drugs are likely to lead to academic suspensions. So this is a very serious policy at Ashoka. Of course, our campus is located in the state of Haryana and alcohol consumption is not permitted in Haryana under the age of 25. So alcohol consumption by an undergraduate student would not only violate the university's policies, but also violate the laws of the state and the country. It should go without saying that you should be respectful towards others in the, uh, in the Ashoka community, just like you would expect them to be respectful of you. And also be respectful towards property. Here I'm including other people's private property, or it could be the property of the university that is meant for the use of the Ashoka community. In a nutshell, those are the sorts of things that we expect from you. Now, to give you a sense of how a CADI case proceeds, let me lay out the basic steps. A CADI case starts with a formal complaint being lodged with the committee. This is done by writing an email to complaint.cadi at ashoka.edu.in. The email will mention all the relevant facts and include with it any evidence photographs, et cetera, that support the complaint. This complaint needs to be sent within 10 working days of the incident being reported. So 
since we are dealing with disciplinary infractions here in CADI, most often the CADI complaint is filed by university staff, right? especially the staff associated with residence life. A lot of the, uh, the infractions tend to happen in residence halls. Uh, when we receive the complaint in the committee, the first thing we do is the complaint is taken up by our internal screening committee, which is a subset of our members. The screening committee decides on whether the complaint is valid or not. At this stage, the screening committee may contact the complainant uh, and collect more evidence. But at this stage, we do not yet contact the defendant. If the screening committee unanimously decides that the complaint is invalid, the case is simply closed. On the other hand, if it determines that the complaint is valid, then we start to reach out to the defendant. We send the defendant the original complaint in full, uh, and that includes the photographic evidence uh, that has been submitted and we, that we have uh, acquired by that point. And at that point, we also ask the defendant for a written statement. This is so that they have an opportunity to be heard and to tell their side of the story. Once the statements are in, the case is deliberated upon by the full committee. At this point, the committee may request physical hearings uh, with the complainants and or the defendants. So uh, a student who is a defendant may be called in to meet with the committee and uh, answer questions and so on. Right? That's a physical hearing. Um, the committee may also seek further evidence, add other defendants to the case and so forth. You should know that all the committee's deliberations are completely confidential and they are not made available to anyone outside the committee, including the defendant, either while the case is being prosecuted or even after the case is closed. Finally, the committee arrives at a decision on each defendant in the case. The committee may decide that no infraction has been committed. Right? If no infraction has been committed, the committee may give no sanction or it may give an advisory to the student if it feels that the student could have comported themselves in a better manner. On the other hand, if we determine that an infraction has been committed, then you could have a range of sanctions. Uh, for example, uh, this could include a, pro a probationary warning. Uh, it could include academic suspensions of different lengths. Uh, if there's been destruction of property, it may include damages. Uh, in extremely egregious cases, we may even recommend uh, that the vice chancellor expel the student from the university. Uh, there is no set formula for uh, what is a particular offense and what is the sanction that corresponds to it. Uh, the sanctions tend to be affected by the severity uh, of the offense, uh, whether we think that the incident was one off uh, or it was part of a pattern of behavior. Uh, and whether there is a past history uh, of caddy infractions by the student. So just to give you a sense, uh, if this is a first offense involving abetment of trespass, that's fancy language to say, for example, uh, when someone allows an unauthorized person to enter the residence hall, right? Uh, they're likely to get a probationary warning if this is a first offense. On the other hand, as I've said before, if there's a, a case that involves drugs or alcohol, then the very likely outcome is a suspension or even an expulsion. Once the caddy has taken a decision, it will be communicated in writing. So first of all, of course, it is communicated in writing to the defendant. Aside from the defendant, uh, the caddy decision is also sent to the university's registrar for the record of the university. The, uh, the next person that is in informed is the complainant. Uh, so for example, if this is the residence life staff that has lodged the complaint, uh, this will be, uh, the, uh, the communication will go to the residence life staff and it will also be copied to the Dean of Student Affairs. For suspensions, a letter is sent from the registrar uh, to the student as well as to their parents. Parents are contacted for uh, suspensions are informed about uh, suspensions. Okay. Uh, further, the decision is communicated to relevant offices in the cases of suspension. So, for example, campus security knows, uh, needs to know that you are not permitted to be on campus. Uh, the OAA uh, needs to know, or if the student happens to be a young India fellow, the YF dean uh, needs to know. Uh, 
So certain offices are also informed in the case of uh, suspensions or worse. Uh, Any time uh, that a decision is taken in CADI, the student has a right to appeal against a decision that went against them. Uh, the appellate authority for a CADI decision is the vice chancellor. It is important to note that CADI decisions are confidential. So the committee does not inform other faculty members, staff or students, or persons outside of Ashoka. So uh, the committee will not inform other, say, parents or potential employers. Uh, only specific staff are informed on a need to know basis. And as I mentioned before, defendants' parents are informed in case of suspensions or worse. Right? So caddy decisions are kept confidential uh, even after the uh, decision uh, after the decision has been taken, but certain offices are informed on a need to know basis. Uh, caddy decisions also do not appear on the student's transcript. But you should know that a caddy record may lead to the denial of certain opportunities within Ashoka. For example, becoming a member of the student government, uh, becoming a resident assistant, a peer tutor or a peer mentor, or cohort leaders during orientation, uh, or becoming a teaching assistant, and various other kinds of leadership roles. Taking up these roles requires a no objection certificate from the university registrar, and that may be denied uh, to an offending student. Now, even if you don't smoke or drink alcohol or vandalize property or indulge in various other kinds of misbehavior, you can still unwittingly or unknowingly contribute to situations where a disciplinary infraction occurs and your innocence is in question. So what can you do to protect yourself from these situations? First, it's critical that you're aware of all the relevant university policies, regulations, and the laws of the land. The lack of knowledge of a policy or a law is not a mitigating factor when Caddy takes a decision. So you're not going to uh, be able to argue that uh, you, know, you should not be sanctioned or you should get a lower sanction just because you weren't aware of what uh, a particular policy was. Okay? So to give you an example, uh, possessing a, an empty bottle of alcohol in your room is a violation. Students sometimes have come to us to argue that they were using the bottle only for decorative purposes and they had no idea that doing that was a violation. But I'm afraid it is a violation and it is clearly mentioned to be so in the residence life policy. Second, you should know that you are jointly responsible for the space you share with your roommate in the residence hall. Uh, if you see your roommate engaging in a disciplinary infraction, um, you know, this could be, for example, smoking or drinking, uh, you should first discuss this with your roommate and you should make them understand that their actions impact you negatively. And if this doesn't work, you should discuss this with the residence life staff. Right? You may be able to resolve the situation without the situation escalating into a caddy case in which you get embroiled. Okay? Um, and also having talked to the residence life staff may be very important in establishing your innocence should there eventually be a caddy case. If you witness violations occurring, uh, to take another example, you come to a party and, and find that others are drinking alcohol. Even if you can't persuade others to change their behavior, you should remove yourself from that situation. If you do not do that, and there is eventually a caddy case, say a warden uh, discovers that there is a party happening with people drinking, it may be very hard to prove your innocence from at least complicity in the infraction. Finally, if you're called upon by the committee, to make a statement in a case, it's very important to be completely truthful with us. Otherwise, you risk being charged with attempting to mislead the committee and obstructing the course of justice. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, it. Um, if you have any queries, um, if you're confused about whether an incident should be reported to the CADI uh, or to the ARC, the anti-ragging committee, or to CASH, uh, you should feel free to write to uh, CADI at ashoka.edu.in. Uh, you can also write directly to uh, the chair, that's me, or the member secretary uh, at the email addresses that are in front of you. 
uh, but please uh, do not contact individual uh, caddy members regarding complaints uh, or such. The office bearers are the people that you should uh, be contacting. Okay, that's pretty much it. Thank you for listening, and I hope each one of you has a safe and enjoyable time while at Ashoka. Thank you.